Swinburne University of Technology. Hi, welcome to this podcast on hand execution. So what we're going to have a look at in this podcast is first, well, what is hand execution? And then uses of hand execution. So why, why am I asking you to do this? And performing hand execution. So the process by which I want you to be able to perform hand execution as part of the unit. And it's important that you follow uh, the process that we've specified. So what is hand execution? When we're programming, we write code for the computer to execute. With hand execution, what we actually do is execute that code ourselves using paper and pencil. It's a fairly simple process, but it's really important to help us understand what the code we are writing does. So we, as I said, we write code mostly for the computer to execute. That's the purpose of our code. But what we want to do is really understand what that code does. What does that code tell the computer to do? When we understand how the different statements get the computer to do different things, you can then better understand your code and you'll be able to create code that will do whatever you want to do because you'll understand what each of the different actions gets the computer to do. So with hand execution, what we're doing is performing the actions that we have in our code one step after the other. Now, the great thing is computers are unintelligent. So hand execution isn't super tricky. It's doing what a computer does. A mechanical process do exactly what the code says to do. And so the one thing you have to really understand is what are the actions that the code means. So when I say x colon equals 10, what does that do? What does that mean? So we have to understand how the computer interprets those or how the compiler get, gets the computer to do those actions. What is it actually doing? Uh, you then perform the action one after the other. So each action you just perform in sequence the same as the computer would do. And the key here is to understand you know, what are these actions getting the computer to do? So when we write a certain piece of code, what does the computer actually do when it runs that piece of code? And that's, the, that's what we're really after here, that understanding. Now, when we go through hand execution, some of the things you might want to do as you're going through it, we don't, I mean, it is a mechanical process to execute the code, but then we can try to understand the code more deeply. You know, what was the purpose of this code? This code was written by a programmer. They had some purpose. They wrote it for some reason, hopefully. So they wrote the code for some, what, what does it do? Why are these set of instructions provided? What does this sequence mean? What does it do? And we can analyze the code that we're reading to try to work out how it achieves goals. So if I know what the task is, it's supposed to be doing this, but I don't understand how it's doing that, then when I read through the code and try to execute, work out what it's doing, uh, I'm analyzing that code in order to work out how it achieves the goals. So I know what the goal is, how do we actually achieve that with this piece of code? So in general, the uses for hand execution, uh, well, firstly, to help you understand what are we telling the computer to do? When I say this piece of code, what does it mean? What does it get the computer to do? Uh, it also gives us a way, or, or gives you a way, to demonstrate that you do understand what the computer does. Because part of the assessment for this unit is you need to demonstrate your understanding of these different actions that you're going to get the computer to do, the different statements in the programming languages. And so by hand executing something, you're able to show, I can read this code and I can tell you what the computer will do. Okay, So it's important with this hand execution process, you're trying to demonstrate the process, not just the final answer. All right, we don't want an answer out of this. This is a process demonstration. Okay. Another thing that we can do with hand execution is locate errors. Sometimes, quite frequently, I think, uh, the code that we write has small mistakes in it, obviously unintentional. Uh, and we write it thinking that it's going to do what we want it to do. But when we run it, the computer doesn't do what we want. It's very frustrating. But what we need to do then is look at our code. The computer's done exactly what we told it to do. Yeah, so the problem, it's our problem. We made a mistake. We need to think about, well, 
what does the code actually do? And so hand executing gives you a way of going through the code and saying, well, what this is, I know I wanted it to do this, but it's doing something else. Why is it doing that something else? And you can look at your code and work out where your errors are. This has been a Spindoin production.